Welcome back to Hacker. In this video, we're diving into how to build a simple chatbot using ChatGPT Flask HTML CSS and JavaScript. This guide is perfect for those who like to understand the workings behind a chat application and how it can expand to the frameworks like React. Let's get started. So this is the end result of what we're going to build. This is basically a simple chat interface called Ask Genie, where users can input messages that are sent to an API. The chat interface is styled directly with the HTML document for simplicity. Uh, the JavaScript part captures the uh, from the form submission and sends a message to API and handles the display of both user and genie messages within the chat window. It also includes dynamic typing uh, indicated for more interactive user experience. So let's look in what it is. So yeah, help me learn Python. So this can be your learning buddy also. So yeah, it responds. So that's how it responds, and we have it, all the information regarding here Python. So, moving to the overview of the project, our project is a chat interface called Ask Tini, where the user can input a, uh, questions and receive responses. This is a basic model that demonstrates how the client side web technologies can create uh, interactive applications. We'll break down the components of this project and explain how each part contributes to the overall functionality. So. Moving on, first thing is to generate the API key. So we need to log in to the OpenAPI website and create an account to sign in. So we're gonna be showing that in a bit. So here, this is the OpenAPI page. Uh, this is called platform.openapi.com. So wherein we have to sign in first, and then uh, we have to navigate to API keys and then create a, a secret key here. Name it as you want. So just give the permission to all and just type, uh, click and create secret key. It generates a secret key. Uh, first, it asks for the, just we need to sh showcase that we are humans. This is just a check it's giving us. So, yeah, the application is completed and then the key would be generated. Once the key is generated, make sure to copy and uh, safely store your API key and treat it like a password and do not share it publicly or within the unauthorized individuals. So introduction to front end. So we uh, we are using HTML CSS and JavaScript. Uh, so let's go to the code and explain how the structure. So basically, this is a uh, index.html which we have uh, have all the code here for what to be displayed. So this is the code uh, having this code having a classes with div class with chat container, uh, chat header, and chat messages and chat form. This is gonna take an input. Uh, and then we, we have a placeholder type a message and then we, we just have a send button. So HTML structure explained. So starting with HTML, we have a structure that includes a chat container and a header for a chat and an area where the message will be displayed and a form for sending messages. So this layer serves as a skeleton of a chatbot interface. So let's look into what are the, uh, what are the different parts of here. So here we have a chat header and this is a chat message as we can see the highlights. So this is the chat form where we take the input. Uh, so let's delve into the code. It will get more understanding of what we so we just seen that now. So we just styled this using CSS. So uh, we use CSS to make the chatbot visually appealing and user friendly. We have applied styles to make the chat container stand out and differentiate between the user and the genie messages and ensure that the chat input and the send button are intuitive to use. So the use of colors, padding, and layout techniques like flexbox enhance the user experience. This way we have the styles to CSS defined. So as you see here, we define the styling for the body and uh, we have styling for the chat container, we have styling for the chat header and we have styling for chat message and all this as well. So we have a different uh, for the for user and genie. So this styling ensures that we do segregate between the user and genie. So we have a, a chat form styling here and similarly for uh, send button and all. So we, we can customize the styling. Styling is not a big deal. Uh, we can even use whatever you want and make it little like more appealing uh, so yeah we bring it to this to life using JavaScript the JavaScript is where the magic begins uh, we have written the scripts to handle user inputs simulate a conversation between a dynamically adding messages to chat area and even the simulator genie typing before responding uh, this is done with through asynchronous JavaScript we can simulate where we simulate a uh, sending a message to your API and receiving the response uh, showcasing how real-time communication could be implemented. So here, 
we're just getting the this is just a event listener for the ch form submission and this is the function to send uh, messages to ABA and retrieve the message uh, responses so here this is just uh, code written for indicating the mm, just like dot 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 for making a real world experience of chatbot this this part where uh, we send uh, we are call API and then we fetch the result and then we since this is a single function we just mention a way to make it uh, like look like synchronous uh, so I, I mean we have will wait until we get the response and then we send the response this form uh, this function handles the display message like this is called like when here like here so here uh, once uh, we have the submit uh, user clicks the submit we get the short input and in, from the input field and then if the input is uh, empty we just return uh, so since like there's a chance that user can just click uh, a submit button with a null messages or empty messages so and then uh, if not then we display the user message uh, using how the user message will be displayed in the user style sheet uh, that is uh, hand handler is being uh, here so here we have the message view and class list add sender so this picks up the sender part of uh, styling sheet by sender we have sender is user right so here it picks up the user's background and so yeah and then uh, we display the con uh, mess uh, text context to the message and then we append the child to message view and then we just scroll down so after that uh, what we call is we make uh, input field is like we don't want to uh, same once the user is typed the message we, we want to clear that so we make it as a empty string and then we wait for the response. We we call the API, and then we display the message. Here we send the uh, what uh, receive sender as a genie. So this genie handles the genie's uh, style sheet here. It picks up the style sheet from here, genie, and then it, it shows the different back background color and uh, uh, styling for that. So hope you got the overall idea of what API is doing. So this is the main part where we send message to the API, and then we fetch it using like using the asynchronous uh, function here. So I think, yeah, that uh, I hope it has given an oral idea. So introduction backend. So why Flask? Flask may, makes it easy to set up server that can handle HTTP requests. For a chatbot, it processes the message sent by the users, decides an appropriate response, uh, and sends that response back to the front end. This back and forth is crucial for simulating a real world conversation. So, so First, we need to install some dependencies. That so, what we need to install is like we have to install Flask, we have to install op uh, Flask cores, and open API. So, to integrate the Flask, we first need to set up a basic Flask application. This involves creating a Python file. Let's go to the file so that will give you more idea. This is the Flask file. Uh, we this. Is called uh, we name it as app.py and then defines the route that uh, listens for the post request uh, and from the front end. So this when a request is received, the flash external API. So it's sim simply sending a response based on the input. So here what we're doing is the we calling external API. And then uh, here the flask endpoint is defined as uh, slash ask. So here so we export as our open API key as an env environment variable here. So this just I kept the key for the demo purpose. By the time you'll be uh, sh uh, seeing this video, the key would be revoked. So just for a de uh, demo purpose, like uh, you need to keep your uh, key as secret as possible. When, when a message is received, our Flask app processes this message and returns a response. This is where you have you could integrate the um, AI and or other logic to make your chatbot more intelligent. So connecting front end to the Flask, where it is done is here we call the API here, right? HTTP localhost because the Flask server runs at 5000 port. We have it 5000 port here, and the API is uh, endpoint is ask. So we have it uh, integrated there. The Flask app then uh, opens the uh, uh, like processes the messages and then sends which our front end displays to the user. So this seamless integration between the front end and back end technologies is what makes up web applications like our chatbot possible. Conclusion with Flask insights. By combining a Flask backend with a front-end setup, we have created a simple and functional chatbot. Flask handles the complex logic and data processing and allowing our front-end to remain lightweight and focused on user interaction. So this project uh, showcases how different technologies can work together to create a dynamic website or a web application for the matter. 
So exploring with React and further. As we've seen, starting with the HTML, uh, CSS and JavaScript, then integrating a Flask backend sets a strong uh, foundation. If you're considering making the jump to the React, remember that the React would enhance the front end by making it more modular and state ma uh, management easier. React's component-based structure allows for more organized and scalable uh, development, and it, its state management features streamline the tracking of user interaction and data. So meanwhile, if Flask backend can remain logically the same, serving the powerful and flexible API. So this project is just a starting point. Uh, whether you're interested in enhancing the front end with the React and ex expanding the Flask app capabilities or incorporating AI for dynamic responses, there's a wealth of possibilities to explore. Keep experimenting and learning and you'll continue to grow as a developer. So thank you for watching. Happy coding. So thanks for playing those such a chat box. If you found this video helpful, be sure to give a thumbs up.